start okay okay yeah so uh, today we'll discuss mostly about uh, unsupervised learning so uh, this is like you can save this link so this is like uh, a high or um, from an unsupervised learning point of view what are the things that uh, are there okay okay so if you if you see here you have gaussian mixture models in gaussian mixture model you have the gaussian mixture and the variational bayesian gaussian mixture mm -hmm. uh, an interesting thing about that is the dirichlet process can you see the dirichlet process okay so you don't have to open it i'm just i'm just uh, telling you some of the names we will not go into the details of each and every one of them okay yeah so can you go back yeah uh next one is the manifold learning um manifold learning important uh an important uh you can say uh, uh, term that you should remember is one is hessian eigenmapping the second one is uh, t distributed stochastic neighbor embedding okay okay uh, tsne is quite widely used these days so we'll take a look at tsne okay go back go below a bit uh clustering so um in uh, so clustering is another common way of you know doing unsupervised learning uh, mostly unsupervised learning happens through clustering okay so uh, k means clustering and uh, go a little bit below go a little bit yeah down was uh it's not okay ldl latent it does latent dirichlet uh, allocation come under clustering can you, <coughs> can you see all the composing signals in components okay okay by clustering can you go a little bit top Yeah, so in clustering, uh, okay, there is only K means. So basically, K means is the primary form of clustering. Okay. Okay. Uh, one, uh, one second. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Yeah. yeah. It? Yes. And uh, the second uh, thing is decomposing signals in components, matrix factorization problem. So in matrix factorization problem, uh, PCA and ICA are mostly used. So PCA, principal component analysis and independent component analysis. OK. Also latent Dirichlet allocation. So uh, uh, PCA, ICA, and LD are very widely used. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have also seen quite uh, usage for NMF, non-negative matrix factorization. This is quite widely used in uh, NLP. Okay. Okay. So we'll take a look at PCA. Okay. Okay. Can you go below? Uh, covariance estimation. Uh, not much novelty and outlier detection. Outlier detection is a uh, field in itself. Uh, one of the uh, so outlier detection is basically a problem in itself. And generally these days, uh, uh, the auto encoders are the neural network auto encoders are. Uh, quite used for outlier detection. Uh, do you, by the way, do you understand outlier detection? No. I mean, uh, I know the meaning, but uh, I don't know how it is done. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, tell me what do you mean by outlier detection? Let me see if uh, we are almost on the same page. So, uh, outliers are the data points which do not really correspond to the uh, to the to the pattern that is found okay yes 
uh, you are almost correct but that is more like a bookish definition okay let me try to give you a more uh, be- uh, real world uh, example kind of a thing say yeah. say you are trying to measure blood pressure so okay what is the general normal human blood pressure 120 by 80 correct so if say you are uh, maybe for high blood pressure how much like uh, you may have uh, some people in at, in your family with high blood pressure or uh, low bp something have you seen uh, any yeah. yes so uh, okay let's talk about low bp do you know anyone with low bp yeah yeah what is the general range for them with for low bp uh, around 60 50 to 60 okay so what will you say if you uh, say you are uh, analyzing a data set and uh, what will you say if you find that low bp is written as 5 or 10 oh 5 or 10 yes 5 no no 5 or 10 like somewhere around that oh uh, yeah that will be uh, very low right yes so Uh, i would say that is pretty much impossible correct like the person yeah. be dead or something yeah 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 but if it's a huge data set you cannot you know go manually and check for where it is 5 where it is 10 or something like that right yeah yes so uh, outlier detection is basically the methods where you try to find outliers and then probably once you know that there is a sizable amount of outliers in your data set then you can uh, you know manually go and check if the outliers that it's uh, that your model is saying that there are outliers it, is it an actual outlier or does it you know actually belong it should you throw so you can say that if the person has low bp of 5 uh, you can safely throw away that uh, specific sample correct Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in a general data set, you do not really know in uh, it's when you are doing actual analysis, you may not know. So uh, once you do outlier detection, maybe then you can manually go and check in the data set if it's actually does it actually look like an outlier, and then probably you can you know decide to either keep or throw away the samples. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. So. in neural network models there is this restricted boltzmann machines which are you know quite uh, old or you can say one of the first neural network models and uh, stochastic maximum likelihood learning is what is generally so many of the neural networks are actually the theory of neural networks are actually based on uh, stochastic maximum likelihood or maximum likelihood but uh, for our present uh, discussion will not go into maximum likelihood is that okay okay yeah uh let's just so uh, we'll just take a look at uh, the way so probably uh we'll start with pca so can you open pca pca okay principal component analysis it should be 2.5.1 Yes. Yeah. Hello, open it. Or? Yes, yes, you can open. Okay. So, uh, let me see where I can find the code. Okay, I have some documentation on PCL. Let me send you that. So PC is both uh, used as a. uh to sort out the features as well as to uh, as a clustering algorithm by itself correct okay 
so yeah uh, for so pc is not machine learning but you can use it as a machine learning algorithm okay okay uh just give me two minutes let me Yes. Okay, I'll send you a link. Can you open the link? So, can you go? like uh, below and you'll find a tab called uh, in production so in this blog post is basically uh, all the internal workings of pca mm -hmm. so if you see here so to implement pc you basically it's just three lines of code it's from cycle and decomposition import tca um, then you have to define the n components n components is the number of components that you want okay n components are, has to be less than or equal to uh, the dimension okay the number of features okay and then you uh, uh, fit transform it on the uh, on the on your matrix okay okay so what pc if i give you a high level value of pc okay probably you can see it uh, so like one of the use cases of pca is that uh, for example you want to do some high level visualization okay say you have a 10 dimensional data okay now you cannot visualize 10 dimensions correct yeah so what you can do is that you can reduce the dimension to uh probably two dimension and then you know uh, uh plot it out and then see what, yeah, yeah yeah what is the uh, you know uh, does it is the remaining it, uh, dimensions it will summarize so what it will do is uh it will basically Okay, let me send you another link. Can you go to this link? Okay, so there, here there is a description of principal component analysis. Okay. So what is principal component analysis? Generally, when we are collecting data, we try to gather as many types of data points as possible. And uh, this is fine. Like you are, you try to gather as many features as possible for the specific data. Mm -hmm. uh, correct. So in many yeah. cases, data we have may be correlated. Okay. Yeah. For example, uh, let's say generally age and height uh, for children between age 10 or age 0 to age 20 is correlated correct after that it, the correlation does not uh, you know mm -hmm. play but uh, if you consider a child between the age of 0 to uh, 20 the height will be correlated with the age correct yeah so you will have height information uh, age information and there is obviously some amount of correlation between them yeah so what principal component analysis is does is that it converts our original variables to a new set of variables which are a linear combination of the original set of variables okay okay what is the mm, now those your original set of variables are uncorrelated 
Okay. Your new set of variables will be unrelated to each other. Okay. And hence they are called principal components. Okay. Okay. The unrelated uh, dimensions are principal components. Uh, yes. So, uh, means, uh, the other ones are since they are correlated, they are not really principal components. They, no, it's, it's more like. Uh, just one second. Uh, so, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, what I was saying was. Uh, so it 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 does some underlying matrix transformations mm -hmm. okay uh, and it uh, what it will do is that it will uh, extract out eigen vectors from the original uh, matrix mm -hmm. in such a way that the new features that you get will be unrelated to each other means unrelated among themselves Okay. 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 So this may seem like a uh, stretch right now, but uh, uh, like right now, just take my word for it. Probably, uh, if we have the time or something, we can look at the underlying maths, and probably then you will be able to understand it better. But for now, just take my word for it. Okay. So what will happen is through the use of PCA, we will be using only those variables. So what will happen in PCA, you will find a new set of uh, variables that are unrelated to each other, but which can contribute to the variance in the data in uh, varying amounts. Does it make sense? Unrelated, but okay. Mm. Let me explain. Okay, can you go into the other link that I sent you, dimensional reduction and principal component analysis uh, part two? Yes, can you go a little bit talk? Yes, 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 that green, green, this one, yeah. So, uh, this is what is happening, what is being plotted is that I am trying to plot the variance in the data consecutively. Okay. 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 So, what uh, I am saying is uh, just one thing. So, what I am saying is like the first principal component is contributing around 75% of the variance in the data. Okay. 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 And you can see that the first and the second uh, principal component are contributing almost 100%. Okay. okay. The remaining components are almost negligible in the sense you cannot almost see them they they are there but they are very small oh okay okay uh, let me see if i have it here what if what uh, if you compare their their contribution, contribution percent is very close to each other Yes, that is the thing that I'm trying to explain that the percentage contribution is actually very, you know, less uh, as you go forward. So if you see, so what happens is how many features you have will ha will be the number of uh, total number of components. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, let me explain it to you. So okay, 
can you go a little bit above? Uh, so can you find a place where is written covariance matrix? Yes, yes, exactly. Just go a little bit. No, no, don't go too much. Just a little bit below. Yeah, just above covariance matrix. Can you find 159.7? No, no, go a little bit below. Just above covariance matrix. Yes. So uh, uh, now go to the code above it. If you see, I have taken uh, some X values. Okay. I concatenated. I concatenated, uh, I concatenated those x values and then I standard like I standardized those and then at the end I printed the shape. Okay. Are you are you seeing it? So basically, yeah. I so basically at the end I created an overall x. Mm -hmm. And then I I was just trying to see what is the shape of x. Okay. okay. So uh, x standard dot shape is giving me 159.7, which means there are seven features and 159 samples. Yeah. Yes. So what will happen is when you do the PCA, it will, or when you try to find the uh, components, it will, since there are seven features, it will give seven. Uh, uh, you can say components. Okay. Okay. Now go to the previous diagram that we were discussing that green diagram. It will be below. So what we are seeing is that corresponding components are contributing to the variance at, at a very minuscule scale. Mm -hmm. So what you can decide is if we just take the first two components, okay, you are effectively capturing 99% of the information. Okay. Okay. So the advantage is that you are getting, it's like if I give you 100 rupees, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you accept 99 rupees and uh, uh, what you gain in uh, uh, what you gain is basically you can say uh, rather uh, less complexity because the more dimensions you have the more complicated data structure you have to deal with correct yeah okay let me uh, try to explain it in an, another way. So if you go to, uh, so uh, what, if you, if you go to the other, uh, this one, other uh, uh, one, uh, yes, yes. So if you check that, why are we interested in PCA? Yeah. A naive, a naive matrix multiplication code will implement matrix multiplication in um, uh, order of n cube. OK. OK, so n cube means you can understand that as the dimensionality of our matrix increases, the complexity also increases exponentially. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that is one of the advantage of uh, PCA is that it reduces your dimensionality, which in effect also reduces the complexity of the matrix multiplications that you need to do. Okay. Okay. Mm. Apart okay. from that, since we were discussing PCA in terms of uh, 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 this uh, yeah. unsupervised learning, you can also say that you are in effect, clustering your code into say you define n components to be two. So you are in effect defining or you are in effect, uh, you know, forcing your data set into two camps. 
Mm-hmm. Are you understanding me or not? Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, so for example, uh, let me show you. Uh, can you go to the other, this one, principal component analysis two again, the other one? Yes, can you go a little bit below? Yes, this one. So if you check here, what I did was I, so you can, uh, you can see that uh, uh, what we had originally was uh, a matrix with seven features, right? Yeah. Yeah. But here we are trying to, you know, uh, we reduce the dimensions. Okay. And after reducing the dimensions, we can clearly see that there are actually three clusters. Okay. So, uh, isn't this unsupervised learning? So, what you will do is that you will basically, uh, 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 probably you can you know, reduce the dimensions of your matrix and then you, when you try to plot it out or see how it is, you find that there are specific clusters that are being formed. And then, um, like, uh, you know, uh, and then say that, oh, now my clustering has happened. So these must be, you know, mm -hmm. it is clustered. So these are these. Okay. Are, okay. So basically you cluster the data Yes. And then take out the dimensions which uh, uh, which are actually clustering. Yes, correct. No, no. So the disadvantage of PC is that you do not know beforehand if it will cluster or not. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, interesting thing to note here is that in this case, it has clustered because what I had actually done was I took the stock prices of three companies hmm. Hmm. and then okay. I uh, implemented PC on top of them. Okay. So since th they are three specific companies, uh, they have clustered. Okay. Okay. Oh, because on it's three companies and you don't need that particular dimension, right? Which uh, over which it clusters. No, 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 uh, no, no. Uh, 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 you are trying to uh, just just listen to me and uh, then I'll try to I'm, I'm getting where your confusion is right now. But, but for now, just listen to me and then probably we will see if your confusion is uh, uh, like removed. Okay. 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 Uh, so what I had done here was that I had actually taken three companies and, you know, uh, reduced the dimensions to two dimensions and then uh, plotted it out. And uh, because it was three different companies, so the final result, we have seen that there are actually three clusters happening. Actually, it's not three clusters. If you see the middle blue portion, it's like it's not like the other two, that violet and the green ones. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. For now, we can consider them to be like three separate entities, correct? Yeah, three clusters. Okay. Okay. But in your real world scenario, you do not know beforehand if there is actually any clustering possible or not. Okay. Are, are you seeing me? Are you are you with me? Yeah, yeah. Correct. Like, yeah, in real world examples, uh, like in your example, it's uh, three different companies, so you know that they they are going to cluster over it. But in uh, real world example, you might not be able to uh, guess. Correct. Correct. So in a real world situation, you do not know how many components you should choose. Okay. Okay. So what you'll have to do is that you have to try out different components. And of course, another disadvantage is that if you choose more than two components, you cannot plot it uh, because you cannot plot it. There mm -hmm. are more than, more than two dimensions, so you cannot really plot it. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then you have to do some more advanced methodologies to see if they are actually, they are actually clustering or not. Hmm, okay. So the disadvantage of PC is that it does not tell you if clustering will happen or not. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. Now, uh, so are you are you clear about PCA somewhat? Yes, yeah, somewhat. Uh, yeah. I'm still uh, not exactly sure how it is done. So uh, for that, how it is done, you have to actually take a look at the mathematics. For uh, reducing the dimensions. And oh, uh, you'll... The, the reduction of the dimension is basically a human thing. So through the use okay. of mathematics, you will find the components. It is, it is okay. going to reduce your dimensions. It's just going to tell you that these are the components and this is the variance that is uh, contributed by each component. Okay. And then you, based upon the number... We make the decision. Sorry, did not get you. So we, so it will just tell you the variance that is contributed by each dimension and we make uh, a, de a decision whether to keep the dimension in our model or not. Exactly, correct. So, uh, like it will just tell you that, okay, uh, these are the components and these these components contribute uh, this much amount of dimensions. And then what you do, you will, based upon the contribution of the, di sorry, com contribution of the variance, you will list or you will sort out the components. And then yeah. say you want... Uh, like in our case, what we did, we reduced the dimension from 7 to 2, correct? Okay. Mm. So I picked the two most principal or the two components which contributed the variance the most. Okay. So if I had, uh, if I had selected that my n components or I will choose uh, three dimensions, then I would have selected the three most prominent components components or the three components which contribute to the dimensions the most mm -hmm. okay are you are you are you getting me yeah you got it okay so of course you cannot choose more than the actual number of dimensions yeah that's the highest number yes yeah. yeah. like in this case there the maximum number of dimensions were seven so i cannot choose n components to be more than seven because that just not, does not make sense Okay. So the number of dimensions that you want to keep is your choice. You have to choose. Yeah. You could, like, I could have chosen one, I could have chosen, means I chose two, I could have chosen one, three, four, five, six, or even all. If I choose all, then the, of course, the, uh, like, implementation of PCA does not make sense because I'm yeah. not anything but but you get the idea right yeah so you uh, um by uh, brute force method you do, i mean like do you uh, keep reducing the dimensions or is it uh, uh, i mean is there an optimal situation uh that like start you, from the middle and that you cannot say from before what you will have to do is that you will have to you know uh, check out different dimensions Mm, okay. And then uh, it's also a lot based on uh, a lot based on. So how you choose the number of dimensions to select if you, okay, uh, this is actually a very good question. Okay. Okay. Let, let me explain it to you. So can you go back to that green chart that we had where we were discussing variance? Now, in this case, you can see that my two principal components are actually contributing 99% mm. to the variance, overall variance. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if let's say we have some other data set where the first two principal components are contributing, say, 50%. Mm. Okay and the next component is uh, contributing say 25 percent okay so how much total it became um, seven, seven yeah 70. 
so first say first component is uh, okay first component is contributing 70 sorry 50 percent second component is contributing 25 percent mm -hmm. okay third component is contributing 20 percent 95 uh, 95 okay yeah and fourth component is uh, uh, contributing one percent 96 okay, okay. 96, yeah. and let's say the remaining are contributing in lesser lesser amount yeah okay so okay. the top three are the principal components so the general recommendation is that choose that many components after which you cross 95 percent okay but this is a general recommendation uh, your project may have a different set of guidelines okay or your domain or your use case may have a different set of uh, parameters but in general uh, if your uh, cumulative variance contribution is more than 95 percent you can you can keep that many dimensions okay so this comes into picture when the data is when there is uh, a, a huge amount of data and we might have to reduce the dimensions right yes but if the data is manageable then you don't really think about uh, this not necessarily so uh, uh, like one use of pc is of course for clustering okay another use of pc so um, so I am getting your question. So here, the answer to this question is the curse of dimensionality. Hmm. Let me explain it to you. Let me see if I can find the... <laughs> okay, I'm not getting the correct this one, but what happens is the more the number of dimensions uh, you have in your model, the less the number of uh, the the generalizability of your model decreases does it make sense yeah <laughs> Means, uh, is it like uh, if you have too many dimensions it might uh, it not might generalize you well. like overfitting uh, yes correct exactly overfitting is the correct word mm. okay uh, so overfitting may happen happen so what happens is uh, generally the higher dimensions are noise okay okay and you do not want your model to learn the noise you want your model to learn the pattern not the noise okay yeah yeah uh, Second, let me see. Okay, I'll 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 send you the. There was a very good uh, description of why you do not want why you want your dimensions to be as less as possible mm -hmm. I'm not, okay. but I'll, I'll send you so that 
aspect is called the, the curse of dimensionality which means mm. that the more the greater the number of dimensions the uh, less confident you will be regarding uh, the fact that uh, your model will actually predict or do good in the real world okay okay so you actually said it the correct way uh, that uh, the uh, the higher dimensions are actually do not contribute much to the you know uh, the uh, applicability of the model so mm -hmm. you actually want as less dimensions as possible okay yeah so we were talking that uh, we uh, like um, pca does not actually guarantee that uh, our then our uh, model will cluster or no yes so let's so on that note let's go to a means okay Let me go to a means Yeah, go this one? Yes, yes, and there you will find K means. So if you go below, you will find K means, mini batch K means, and the difference. You'll find some some diagrams below. Or even that diagram is good. Or even yeah, this diagram. I was talking about this diagram. No, okay. You have a collection of data points. Okay. Hmm. What you will say is that you have to define k. Like in PCA, you define n components. Correct. Yeah. Same. It will define. You will have to define k. So in this okay. in this case, they they have defined k to be uh, three. Yeah, the guarantee is that it will cluster. Mm -hmm. Okay, it will cluster, you know, to three values. Okay. Okay, but the disadvantage is that the cluster may not be real. No. Okay. Okay. For example, in this example itself, the data points are actually. spread across the whole spectrum mm -hmm. but it's kind of forcefully you know bucketing them yeah yeah correct yeah uh, like in the if this were a real problem this does not really make like this does not really help you right yeah yeah so that's the thing like Uh, means it will forcefully, you know, cluster. But uh, the advantage is that you get the guarantee that it will cluster. So it's both a good thing and a bad thing in a way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. So this. Uh, this is. Uh, all these visualizations uh, we are uh, we are looking at. in at only two dimensions right but uh, since we will will have many dimensions right and the clustering will happen with respect to all the dimensions yes that is another advantage of k means is that it will uh, cluster based on a hyper uh, on a hyper dimension so in k means you don't really have to worry about the dimensions okay so we uh, we can really visualize uh, like they may be they may have clustered but oh you know in, in high dimensions yeah that is an issue with high dimensions right you you cannot really visualize it that is one of the disadvantages of uh, high dimensions okay we can this is because we are humans we cannot really understand more than three dimensions yeah Okay, uh, so K means is code is also not uh, that big. Uh, uh, let me see. 
you can probably open any example you'll find if they are k-means and they just do a uh, let me see i think it should be a fit uh, k-means and clusters equals to true so it, if you can open any example so any example that they have so this is this is the examples go a little below you'll find some examples there yes yes there are their examples they're written examples yeah. open any example okay go a little bit below you should find that they are calling k means yes yes here if you can see they are calling k means okay go yeah. into scikit-learn cluster import k means mini batch k means and if you go below you should find that they are uh, creating a k means class with n clusters so you have to you know uh, define the number of clusters that you want to okay 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 and then what you do is basically uh, let me see and clusters and then you do uh, dot fit you call the fit uh, argument so it's it's that print cluster in sparse data with percentage s t0 equals to time came dot fit okay. homogeneity completeness those things okay a little bit top like print clustering yeah ops mini batch mini batch k means then you have your k means and then print clustering sparse data with percentage s t0 equals to time came dot fit x you're almost there we go a little bit left yes here yeah got it yeah yeah so you call it fit and it will fit your data okay Okay. Uh, okay. Just as a last discussion, probably we can discuss a little bit about PSND. P, uh, sorry, PSA? PSND, PSND. P, uh, Plastic neighbor embedding. To get uh, neighbor embedding, okay. Go back. So one more step, yes, TSAD. Yes, T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding. So this is also very similar to you know PCA. You are in effect transforming your matrix. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes, yes. So, are you are you understanding me? No, I I couldn't hear in the last sentence. So, uh, what it's very uh, similar to PCA in the sense that in PCA, what you are effectively doing is you are finding the eigen values and the eigen factors. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's very related to uh, probability uh, it's very related to you know uh, variance where in tsne if you if you go to a little bit top yes here yeah. so tsne converts affinities of data points to probabilities okay okay so um probabilities is very uh you know, uh, I will say from a real world or from a uh, actual implementation. Uh, so, uh, do you understand? Like things which are more varied carry with them more likelihood. For example, say, <coughs> I'm 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 trying to give a very loose similarity between uh, probability and variance 
in the okay. sense that say some data is some data class is highly varied mm-hmm. okay there are a lot of classes or lot of uh, you know uh, different points in a uh, particular class so what will happen is that the probability of that class will increase mm-hmm. does it make sense yeah yeah so it it tries to you know uh, uh, find the probabilities of the different data points and in the process what happens is it reveals the structure uh, it reveals the underlying structure of the data set okay so mathematically this is a bit of a stretch uh, so i will definitely recommend that for now uh, take your uh, you know uh, data for example like uh, for now on whatever data set that you are trying to implement uh, or whichever data set you are trying to you know uh, 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 look into or whichever data set you are trying to understand implement k means clustering and pc on them and try to understand the underlying data structure then okay. probably you will be able to get a better feel of the different clustering mm-hmm. ex- uh, examples or more complicated clustering algorithms like tsm okay okay does it make sense Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like for example, uh, do you remember we were we were doing that uh, data set where there were different markdowns and the markdowns were not really helping yeah. the model. Yeah. Yeah. Probably what you can do is that you can, uh, you know, do a dimensionality reduction, implement a PSC, PC on the markdowns, take the principal components and then see if it mm-hmm. helps or not. Okay. 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 So we'll wrap it at this. So, uh, uh, from a high level, do you think you have somewhat understood it, or if you have some questions at this point? No, yeah, understood it. Okay. High level, I understood it. Okay. Uh, all the details we'll have to all the scoring. Is there a document where uh, uh, it explains all the different scoring methods? so uh, not just for clustering but for like any any algorithm just uh, do we use score or do we use precision recall or do no uh, you know some document about scoring no so the are you talking in general or are you talking about in specifically in terms of unsupervised learning uh in general actually because uh, yeah this fit and predict and everything that's fine but uh, in each uh, they're using different scoring methods right uh, so what i will do is that i'll try to uh, at least find and if i do not find i'll try to at least compile a uh, kind of a uh, you know cheat sheet about scoring if you can call it that okay okay uh, like what are the different scoring mechanisms that you can use and when to use what okay also another thing uh, probably you might have uh, understood but uh, unsupervised learning you cannot apply scoring because there is nothing to compare it against yeah yeah okay so how do we know with this model is good yeah scoring only makes sense if you have a y uh, component there is no y component in unsupervised learning that is why it is unsupervised yeah okay so uh, for now as i will definitely recommend that just take something and just you know uh, any data set and try to implement pca and, okay uh, okay then and, yeah. i will definitely say that you will you will get a better understanding of it yeah sure sure okay thanks for your okay. time uh, thank you yeah